Hey everybody, I have another video here for you today on oh, my Ancient America series. I made some videos about uh, almost four years ago now. And then I made another series about a year and a half ago. I started one that really I'm still working on. But a few of these places I have revisited. And one place I'm going to revisit today is called Grand Mound in very northern Minnesota, right up on the border. This is an area of the world that I'm kind of familiar with. Let me just back out here, but this is pretty much on the border. Here is International Falls right here. Right down here is Lake Habitogama, a place I visited on an annual basis with my friends up until the time I moved to Las Vegas. But this is a site where fishing is really king. Right down here is the historic Grand Mound site, and this is really unique to ancient America because it's really a mound and an effigy, but I think I've got my finger on what this represents now based on the tales and the geographic region that this site lies in. But here, this area is known for fishing. There are sturgeon caught in this river, giant sturgeon, but this site seemed to be used for sturgeon and walleye fishing by the people who were living here maybe 2,000 years ago or past that. Here is Midwest Outdoors, a look at a huge sturgeon caught here. And people go fishing up here when there's still snow on the ground in the very early, early spring. And I've been up to Cabotogama on uh, like May 20th when there's still been ice on the lake. So this is a pretty uh, harsh part of the world. People were surviving here 2,000 years ago and maybe migrating up here in the springtime for the sole purpose of getting a lot of fish. And this is an area of the world where walleye fishing really takes over in the middle of May here in Minnesota. And I mentioned walleyes in my Gunflint Lodge meteorite video, but here is my old hockey line mate Barrels holding, I think this is a 26 inch walleye caught at Cabotogama. And I've never included an old friend of mine in the video, but I talked to Sully a few days ago. But here is a close up of the prize walleye Tens of thousands of people in the Minneapolis area go north in the middle of May for walleye opener. Here's a good look at one. Here is the Grand Mound today, and there was a little bit of controversy. The natives in this area did not want this open to the public, and I guess they came down to some meetings they had in 2018, late 2018, and they decided to close the site to the public. Here is a pic of the mound in the early 1900s, and this was unique because this isn't a conical mound. This is long and it's kind of wide compared to other large mounds coming from 2000 years ago. Here is the latest update from the site. This is dated from about 11 months ago. It says the Minnesota Historical Society decided yesterday to keep the Grand Mound Historic Site closed to the general public following the wishes of descendants of Native Americans who were buried at the sacred site. The site will be accessible to Native Americans for ceremonial and educational purposes. I don't quite understand why this can't be a human ancient site and accessible for everybody to learn about ancient societies here in North America for educational purposes. That's a little strange to me. Now here is a diagram of the site on the Rainy River. The Grand Mound here, it's long and it's wide and it has this tail and that is very unique to ancient America. There are a few small mounds, maybe built by cultures after this was originally built. That's speculation. A little background on the site. It says, located 17 miles west of International Falls, the Grand Mound Historic Site comprises five sacred burial mounds in an ancient sturgeon fishing village. The village dates back more than 5,000 years while the mounds were first developed approximately 2,000 years ago. The state's biggest burial mound is the largest earthwork mound in the upper Midwest, measuring 25 feet in height and 140 feet in length. It is part of a network of mounds, sturgeon fishing sites, and seasonal villages stretching 90 miles along the Rainy River along the Canadian-U.S. border. But what does this represent? I think this is a very important story. And this ties together a lot of topics I have talked about. Genesis, Plato, somebody going to Egypt and creating the temples on the primordial mounds. 
the Mayans and the story of the turtle of creation. Well, here, northern Minnesota, it's a muskrat. But it says it is recorded as 25 feet high, and people here in the early 1900s recorded it almost 40 feet high. So was there a little miscalculation or deterioration? But in that black and white photo I showed at the beginning, you can see where looters had got into that mound. But it says here, some interpret the mound's unique diamond shape and long tail to be a muskrat or serpent. And I think I mentioned in my Minnesota mound video that I did maybe over a year ago that I thought it very well could represent a serpent because of the serpent effigies found really all over the ancient mound builder sites. But it says here, some interpret the mound's unique diamond shape and long tail to be a muskrat or a serpent. While most mounds were built in high elevations, Grand Mound was built in a floodplain close to the Rainy and Big Fork rivers. But I had mentioned before that maybe it was a serpent. But now looking at it, and it's found in the floodplain, and people even going by some of these mound sites on the Rainy River noticed when flooding took place that these mounds created little islands, or maybe primordial mounds. Now there is some debate on what this represents, but it says Minnesota's Natural Register archaeologist David Mather suggests that the mound may represent a muskrat, an effigy of the earth diver. The earth diver is a widely known mythological figure who takes various shapes depending on the region of the world. The hero dove in to get a piece of the earth and helped recreate the world from a former flood. And if I remember the story, an otter does the first attempt, and maybe a beaver, and then finally, as an afterthought, they ask the muskrat to dive down and help save the world. He dives down, gathers up just a few pieces of mud, and from there, the new world starts on the little mud mound that the muskrat creates. And this is perfect for this part of the world, and I'll tell you why. Now here is ancient Lake Agassiz and it covered a major part of central and southern Canada and northern North Dakota and Minnesota here. This was much bigger than any of the Great Lakes. And here you see the ancient shoreline would have came right down along the Rainy River site here, within miles of it really. It says around 13,000 years ago this lake came to cover much of what are now Manitoba, northwestern Ontario, northern Minnesota, eastern North Dakota, and Saskatchewan. At its greatest extent, it may have covered as much as 440,000 square kilometers, larger than any currently existing lake in the world. But it seems the animals had such an integral part of the early creation stories of this world that we're living in today, the turtle from the Mayans, the primordial mounds, really, that comes from the Egyptians. And I have mentioned Noah and the Great Flood before. He finds a little patch of land after a great flood. But this mound here, probably the muskrat, the earth diver, when it floods here, this becomes an island itself. Seems these people were telling stories of a great flood that happened in this exact area. They were telling the story by an ancient earth effigy in the exact spot it should be. The Great Flood happened over 13,000 years ago in this area, and it's still reflected in this site. And people have been here at least 5,000 years. Seems they carried on stories very, very well. Now here on the Rainy River, when I did a video about a year and a half ago, I can't remember, but I said this probably represented a serpent, but now I'm 99 convinced this is a representation of a muskrat. It saves the world from a great flood. One of the greatest floods in the world took place here 13,000 years, roughly, years ago. So how did they know this? Well, they passed on stories from generation to generation in exactitude. That is the historic Grand Mound, closed to the public. I have a few issues with that, but if they're just trying to preserve the site, well, uh, all these sites are different. Ancient America is fascinating. But the Grand Mound site here on the shore of a very large, very ancient lake, a creation story that matches Genesis, the Egyptians, and others from around the world. These tales are just as important. Hope you thought that was cool. And you all have a very nice day.